Hi people. So it's here the hours of the 31st um, of October. Again, there's a lot going on in the world at the moment and uh, I probably won't be making necessarily individual videos for all of these things. So I'm just going to mention a few things in passing. Brazilian presidential election, uh, Luis Inacio Lula da Silva Lula has uh, become president again. He's been re-elected. Uh, that is a uh, non-consecutive term, so he's been elected again. Um, this was a very, very divisive election. Bolsonaro, um, I think, is a toxic figure. Of course, it's up to the Brazilian people. Um, it's not my place to tell them who they should vote for, but I uh, do not get a good impression from Bolsonaro. I think he makes Trump look mild. Um, we'll see if he can see the defeat or not, but... Um, I think many people in the democratic world will be breathing a sigh of relief, actually. Um, but, yeah, it is it is up to the Brazilians, but it's a uh, it's big development tonight that uh, Lula has won presidency. So, um, another big story that's developed from uh, Gujarat, India, a bridge collapse. Um, over 100 people have died there, so it's a major disaster. This is just a day after the disaster in Toa. Okay, now to the main point of this video. Um, this is definitely not something I planned. Um, I mean, I never plan videos, but it, it got me quite angry, to be honest, and I, I feel it needs to be said. Um, I feel this one needs to be spoken about. So uh, there's a BBC article on this, and uh, usually, you know, I read out the whole piece. It's quite lengthy, so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to try and... Uh, make my um my quoting of this uh abridged but i'll put a link in the video but you know it's just disgusting um what's being reported um uh, i knew this was a problem in the united states but i didn't realize it was such a problem in this country but apparently it is so this is the headline um the uk terror survivors tracked down by disaster trolls um, and we're, like I said, I'm going to condense my reading a little bit because it's quite long, but I'll put a link to the piece, and it's by Mariana Spring, who's the report involved in this. Conspiracy theorists who claim UK terror attacks have been staged are tracking down survivors to their homes and workplaces. If they are lying about their injuries, a BBC investigation has found. Martin Hibbert, who is paralysed from the waist down, when he and his daughter Eve were caught in the blast of the 2017 Manchester Arena bombing, told the BBC he is now preparing to bring libel action against a man who says he spied on Eve from a vehicle parked outside her home. Richard D. Hall, a conspiracy theorist based on Wales, has described how he physically tracked down survivors of the attack in which 22 people were killed and more than 100 injured to determine whether it was fake. In a video shared with his followers online, he demonstrates setting up a camera to film Eve, now profoundly disabled and in a wheelchair, to see whether she can in fact walk. This is disgusting. I'm all for freedom of speech, Martin Hibbert told me, but it crosses the line when you're saying I'm an actor or I've not got a spinal cord injury or Eve's not disabled, she's not in a wheelchair. You don't know how far he's going to get answers, uh, how far he's going to go to get answers. And this man, Martin Hibbert, had a number of media appearances. He was also involved in the, uh, I think it's called the Point of Light uh, Inspiration Awards. So um, he's fairly high profile himself. But um, the report continues. Mr. Hall suggests that those who were killed in the attack are really alive and living abroad. He also promotes theories that several other UK terror attacks were staged. A former engineer and website designer, he makes money from selling books and DVDs outlining his theories, as well as speaking at events and posting videos online. As recently as mid-October, he had more than 16 million views and 80,000 subscribers on YouTube. So we can't just dismiss these people as fringe nuts because they have influence. When I confronted Mr. Hall at a market stall he runs, he insisted I'm wrong about how he operates. The past five months I've been looking into conspiracy theorists who target UK terror survivors of BBC Panorama and a Radio 4 broadcast. My investigations and news research along with the testimony of those affected shows that conspiracy theories and tactics like those deployed by Mr Hall are emblematic of a wider phenomenon that survivors and bereaved families are experiencing. 
um, a victim of the 2017 Westminster Bridge terror attack, who has been harassed by online conspiracy trolls, told the BBC that surviving a terror attack now seems to inevitably lead to being abused. These types of conspiracy theories and the abuse that they inspire echo those of Alex Jones, the US host of the conspiracist show and website Infowars, who this month was ordered to pay nearly $1 billion to families of the US Sandy Hook school shooting after falsely claiming the 2012 attack was a hoax. And um, his victims were harassed as well. Online abuse describing terror attacks as hoaxes and loads who were injured as so-called crisis actors appear to be on the rise since the pandemic, according to survivors who have spoken to the BBC. Okay. Um, most of the abuse have been, has been perpetrated online, but people I have spoken to say they fear for their safety because the abuse has also begun to affect their lives offline. Nearly one in five people in the UK think terror survivors are not telling the truth about what happened to them. New research for the BBC suggests. Birds say the pandemic has made them more suspicious of official explanations of UK terror attacks. One in five? That's, that's quite shocking. Um, the survey of more than 4,000 people um, way to be representative of the UK population and carried out earlier this month by King's College London also suggests that 14% believe the 2017 Manchester Arena attack probably involved crisis actors who pretended to be injured. 14%. Um, I'm going to try and condense my reading of this. I could say it's quite long. Mr. Hall's claims and tactics also include entering the workplace of Manchester Arena survivor Lisa Bridget, posing as a customer, with the aim of secretly recording her to discover whether she's lying about her injuries, visiting the homes of other Manchester survivors to try to question them about whether the attack was a hoax, publicising the names and locations of dozens of Manchester survivors and bereaved relatives of victims in a video, appealing to his followers to send him any information they have about him, about them. Martin Hibbert first became aware of Mr. Hall's tactics when the police alerted the family to allegations that he had put a camera outside the home of his daughter Eve. Mr. Hall shared a video of himself preparing a small camera strapped to his uh, stake in which he said he would use to check whether Eve really was hurt in the Manchester Arena bombing. Eve, who is now 20, was severe, left severely disabled after the bombing. She experienced a serious brain injury and has lost the use of her left arm and leg. I think it's totally disgusting what this guy is doing. Mr. Hall later said online that Eve had left, left the house in a wheelchair, but added there's no evidence that the injury was a result of the attack. He also documented his attempt to prove that Lisa Bridget, who lost a finger in the bombing, was not injured either by taking a hidden camera to the boatyard where she works. Bridget told me it makes you feel very security conscious because you just don't know who's out there and who might be lurking in a garden or standing around a cordon, uh, corner with a hidden camera on. Messages seen by the BBC show how online abuse, citing conspiracies that Mr Hall and others promote. I've also been uh, sent to uh, the grieving relatives of those killed in the Manchester Arena bombing as well as survivors of other UK terror attacks. There have been attempts by trolls online to identify where terror survivors live and work. Richard Hall requests donations on his websites and promotes an online shop where he sells branded merchandise. So this, uh, this guy is actually making money off what he's doing. He also has a market stall where he sells his book and DVD about the Manchester Arena attack, along with other books and DVDs promoting conspiracy theories. I visited the market stall to ask him questions after multiple attempts to get answers to survivors' questions. He told me he didn't want to talk to me about the evidence he says he has to back up his claims and that he doesn't trust the BBC. I asked how he feels to be profiting from the worst day of these survivors' lives. If you read my book, all the answers are there, are in there, he said. This is a typical tactic of conspiracy cards. When I told him there is no evidence in his book, he told me I'm wrong. He refuses to answer, address questions about whether he really believes UK terror attacks were staged and if he understands the harm as conspiracy theories and tactics, also the survivor of these attacks. After my visit, I wrote to Mr Hall again, but he didn't respond. Since then, he has added a series of disclaimers on his website saying he does not advocate that viewers of this website make contact alleged terror attack victims either online 
or in person. He wouldn't have bothered doing that if the BBC hadn't scrutinised him. He has also posted a new video which he says he did not put a camera outside the home of Eve Hibbert, but admitted to leaving a camera rolling in his van, which was parked in a public place. He says he has made polite door-to-door -door inquiries in order to gather evidence, which is a perfectly legitimate activity when doing research, that his appeal for information from the public does not make him responsible for hateful messages sent by people. But he held firm to his opinion that there has been no satisfaction factory evidence presented to the public which proves that the Manchester Arena incident was not staged. Neil Sanders, a former supporter of Mr Hall, said it is the most far-fetched ideas which are the most lucrative. This is a business. Neil Sanders said he doesn't share Mr Hall's views on the Manchester Arena attack. He believes it is the fans who are shaping the trajectory of a conspiracy theorist like Mr. Hall, who used to focus on theories about UFOs before starting to push claims about fabricated terror. In fact, Mr. Sanders said he assured that when he and Mr. Hall had discussed the conspiracy theories that took off after the Sandy Hooks school shooting, Mr. Hall had dismissed them as nonsense. But he said the more that Mr. Hall has become embroiled in this world, the more he appears to have been bought into these conspiracies. Well, it's a classic rabbit hole, isn't it? more sensational theories, which are the ones that sell, Mr Sanders explained, adding that Mr Hall's talks in pubs and other venues up and down the UK in recent years have been packed. Mr Sanders says he doesn't support conspiracy theories that UK terror attacks were staged. I'm just trying to abridge this reading because, like I said, it's quite lengthy. Travis Freyan, who survived the Westminster Bridge attack, has received support of abuse. He was trolled by online conspiracy theorists uh, after he was filmed just after being hit by a car during the 2017 Westminster Bridge terror attack. Actually, I remember at that time, I don't know if it was that one or the um, one of the other attacks, the London Bridge attack, but even then there were people on YouTube calling it fake. Um, mobile phone footage of him standing on the bridge after breaking his leg, adrenaline delaying the pain, inspired a wave of online abuse. Uh, YouTube did not take down various videos which promoted the theory that he was a crisis actor. But he did say he has had a varying degree of success with other major social media sites. Mr. Frame reported the abuse to the Metropolitan Police. No one has been charged. He said he felt powerless because people don't realise how viciously and frequently their survivors are trolled online. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it there. I'm going to put a link on this video uh, under this. Firstly, if any of uh, the supporters of Hall decide to target me, you know, I, I've got tough skin. You're not going to bring me down. Um, I've dealt with trolls before. I've dealt with uh, the effects of um, speaking out against extremism and speaking out against zealotry. Uh, so I have some experience in that. You're not going to bring me down. Um, but, you know, um, how low can you get? How, how low can you get? This guy, I, I checked out his Facebook page and it's, it's predictable, you know, it's full of, um, it, it's very full of self-victimhood actually, but all narrative is um, toxic, it's utterly toxic. Um, my stance on conspiracy theorists, I've always said, it. of course it's healthy to question R, of course it's healthy to ask questions. But what people I call, uh, I mean, it's basically a British Alex Jones. He sounds, from what I've seen, a bit more, you know, he doesn't shout and rave in the same way. But it's still the same callous disregard for, for victims. Um, and the way he, he worms his way around words, like, oh, well, I, I didn't fill him outside her house, but I had a camera rolling in a public place. Uh, what he's probably referring to with that is that his vehicle was on a public road, but it, it was outside the victim's house. I mean, what I find striking is these worms can can give, but they can't take. And I, I, I don't really care about um, insulting them. I, I think Hall is a scumbag. I think someone who would harass victims of a terrorist attack, in my book, they're a scumbag. And I don't care if he sees this, and I don't care if his supporters see this. Because I'm thinking, you know, if I lost a relative in a terror attack and some sick person was out there saying that I was a liar and that my dead relative was still alive somewhere, I mean, what sort of brainless, 
thick individual would say that. Um, I've I've personally known a few of these types in my life, and they left a bad taste in my mouth because you cannot reason with this mindset. The typical response of these people, just like this panorama investigation showed, was they can they think they've a right to ask questions, but as soon as the questions turn on them, they can't handle it. That makes them cards. You know, so David Hall has this little echo chamber with his equally stupid supporters. Well, actually, I don't know if he is stupid. I I don't know enough about this guy to know if he's if he's stupid or if he's a very manipulative con man, maybe a bit of both, to actually believe that this stuff is all fake. Uh, but what's what I find sinister is the fact that he has millions of views. No, that doesn't mean they all support him, but a good number of them will. I, I don't even know if I want to go to his channel because seeing the just mindless sheep going along with everything this guy is spouting out, his, his lies, it just, I don't know if I could uh, be okay with that, you know, if I could keep my cool because I think harassing victims of a, an atrocity is about as low as you can get. And, you know, the way he worms his way around, like, I'm just making inquiries. You're harassing survivors of a terror attack. And, you know, this little disclaimer he put, the only reason he put that disclaimer, obviously, is because he's come under scrutiny. Would he have put that disclaimer if the BBC hadn't been investigating this? And it's fine saying he doesn't trust the BBC. But the survivors themselves are saying this. They're saying that they're being abused by his followers. No surprise, his own Facebook page is blocked off comment, so only his own supporters can comment there. Um, I feel disgusted, utterly disgusted. Now, one thing is this, is, this is not mainstream opinion. At the moment, this is still kind of a fringe thing on some level, but it's, it's not that fringe. I mean, one in five? I can't get my head around how people could be so mind-numbingly stupid. Like I say, this isn't about blindly believing everything you hear on the news. Occasionally networks get it wrong, very occasionally. But if you're going to look at the, the survivor of a terror attack and say that they're lying, I mean, occasionally you get people who will, for example, try to claim um, some sort of, you know, after the Grenfell fire, there were some people who tried to claim that they lost relatives and so on, and they were exposed and they were charged, I believe, with fraud. So occasionally, when you get tragedies and disasters, that does happen. But people who who are known to be survivors and to have known to survive these things, it, it sickens me to the core. I mean. How brain this has you to be? How how far down that rabbit hole where you just think the whole world is false, like everything is fake, except what you believe. The thing about these nuts is they never believe, they, they never question their own sources. Oh, they know best. They know best. It's this tunnel vision arrogance. They know best. And the rest of us are sheep. The rest of us are idiots. Honestly, if... Um, if I was a survivor of a terror attack, I, I would not be I would not be polite about it. But if these people were targeting me, um, I hope Mr. Hibbert wins his case, and I hope Paul is sued. I hope he faces bankruptcy because what this man is doing, in my opinion, is callous. It's causing very real harm. And yeah, he's put that disclaimer, but he's already sowed the the poison in the minds of his followers. He's basically our very own Alex Jones. Um, I think that anyone who goes to the home of a survivor of a terror attack or any serious crime um, should be charged with harassment. Um, there has to be legal consequences for this. As for the whole thing about online abuse, unfortunately, that's very, very difficult to police. Because these, these people could be anywhere in the world. They're not necessarily UK based. You know, they could be in some basement in Texas or Ontario, or wherever, you know, harassing a Manchester Arena survivor. So it's difficult to police that. I do think social media companies can do more. This gets into the whole question of balance, because on one hand, you don't want 
platforms have become overly censorious, right? But like I was talking about before with the whole Twitter thing and Elon Musk, this is why this sort of free-for-all situation is dangerous. When you get into a situation where free speech is used to morph into harassment, that's not free speech. That's something very, very toxic. So uh, if any of the survivors happen to be watching this, uh, my heart goes out to you. And I, I'm, I'm so sorry that they've had to go through this. I mean, it's bad enough going through the event in the first place, but to then be harassed by some losers, some ignorant, callous people who actually go to the point of tracking down their addresses. And I mean, that's disgusting. That is absolutely disgusting. And, you know, recent years I've come to see a lot about zealotry and extremism. You see this with the eco fanatics, right? Uh, with these conspiracy people. It, it's it's just this blind tunnel vision arrogance. I'm right and everyone else is wrong. And, you know, they call themselves critical thinkers. You're not critical thinkers, you're idiots. You're callous idiots and liars. Maybe both, maybe one or the other. But that's what you are, and um, I've got zero respect for them. You know, I don't even sort of go with, oh, well, they're scared, they're anxious about the world. There's no excuse, no excuse for harassing relatives of children who've died in a terrorist bombing. That, to me, is about as low as you can get. So I, I, don't, I don't accept any of the excuses like, oh, they're scared and they're anxious about the world. You know, uh, it's... I think that's an excuse. It might be an explanation, but it's also an excuse. Um, and, you know, let's just wait and see that uh, the BBC correspondent is probably going to find herself on the receiving end of the abuse now. She's probably going to be harassed by them. She's doing her job and asking him questions, just like he thinks he has a right to do. That's the thing about these people. They're not just arrogant. They're incredibly hypocritical. Is they think they've got a right to ask questions, but when the camera turns on them, and when the scrutiny turns on them, they, oh, well, I don't trust you, so I'm not answering questions. Uh, it's, it's repulsive.